I think the term genetics gets thrown around really loosely, particularly in the strength and physical fitness world. A lot of times people look at their abilities or lack thereof, and they always mention genetics. And if we look at genetics through the lens of the actual definition, we can determine a few things. Some people are more likely to be able to take on a lot of physical training than others. Some people are, you know, born with the ability to jump higher, run faster, and do all sorts of physical activities better than someone else strictly because of their genetic makeup. They may have more type 2 muscle fibers, which would allow them to be more explosive, thus lift more weight. But there's got to be something beyond that. Because when we look at hyper winners, sometimes it's hard to determine these physical genetic traits and if they're actually the best. And how much of these physical genetic traits are what make them the best and how much of it is other factors. I'm fascinated with how Michael Jordan speaks about winning and his experience as a basketball player. It seems as though his common dialogue is the very antithesis of certain motivating factors that we see throughout the internet today. I myself talk about improvement, not comparing yourself to anyone else. Around the internet, you'll hear typical watered-down self-help tactics that allow you to be a better version of yourself, really look inward and be stoic. And what I hear from guys like Michael Jordan is the exact opposite. It seems as though guys like him do it for everybody else. They do it to prove a point. They do it out of fear. They do it out of anger. And they do it out of anxiety. And they win because of those factors. There's an interview where Michael Jordan talks about Kobe versus LeBron, comparing them both as players. In terms of dominance of the game of basketball at this stage, it is LeBron. Championship-wise, Kobe Bryant. He wants it so bad, and he's willing to go to the extreme, you know, guarding a guy, guarding the point guards at the age of 34, playing 38 minutes, 40 minutes. That's ludicrous. I think this is what he's battling with. It is what it is. He's, he's cursed as much as I am. What Michael Jordan describes the things that Kobe Bryant did to win, he describes them as cursed. They weren't blessed. He's blessed like me. That's not what Michael said. He said he's cursed like me. Jay Williams, an All-American point guard for Duke and Bulls point guard, expanded on this. I said, no, I'm going to get there at 3 o'clock. I want to make sure I make 400 made shots before I go back into the room and then I sit in the sauna and I get ready for the game. So, you know, get in the car, get to the gym, get there. And as I'm walking onto the court, who do I see? I see Kobe Bryant already working out. You know, so I put my sneakers on and you ever get lost in what you do where you end up like, wait, it's been an hour and a half? Like I, I'm just, I'm, I'm here, I'm in it. So once I set my foot across that line, I started working out. And so I worked out for a good hour, hour and a half. And when I came off, after I was done, I sat down and of course I still heard the ball bouncing. I look down, I'm like, this guy's, this guy's still working out. So he was working out for like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here. And he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing like game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes. I'm like, I want to see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch another 25 minutes. And he got done. I said, okay, I think I've seen enough. Go play, you know, come back, get in the sauna, get ready for the game. That game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game, I'm like, hey, Kobe, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, because I saw you come in. And I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. That's a person right there who's admitting his motivation is anything but virtuous. It's purely to show other people his dominance. It's purely an egotistical endeavor. We don't hear that from people. And we especially don't hear about that trait being talked about when we talk about genetics. And let me be clear, I'm not trying to demonize these guys. I think, you know, the writing is all there. They, they say these very things. They say that what they do is not virtuous. I'm just simply observing it. My first passion outside of sport was the drums. I started playing when I was 12 and quickly realized the subtle competition building amongst my fellow drummers in jazz ensemble. Something that I never knew was that all of the drummers were practicing like crazy at home while I was just doing what needed to be done and ended up quitting jazz. 
Two of the drummers in my class ended up going to Berkeley School of Music for jazz drumming. I continued playing drums for bands over the years, but I was slowly forced out of a competitive sphere without even knowing why at the time. Maybe I had the genetic makeup to be better than those guys, but we will never know. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because there's this kid, his name is Grayson Nekrutman. He's 19 years old and this kid plays the drums like Buddy Rich. I'm not entirely sure what the status of jazz drumming in the world is, but I wouldn't be surprised if he's one of the best in the world currently. And when I watch this guy play, I can't imagine out of a group of a hundred other jazz drummers, anyone playing like this guy. And what I mean by that is really practicing like this guy, working out. This guy sweats on the kit. You can see sweat dripping off of his face. He's got pit stains because he's working out. He's training on the kit. And one of the comments on his videos where he's going nuts, he's, he's literally using his elbow to hit the snare drum. One of the comments is, what goes through your mind when you're going crazy on the drums like this? And Grayson has one simple answer. Everyone that ever doubted me. Not that he wanted to be the best and do the best that he can and shoot for the stars, no. Only for the reason that he wants to prove himself to others and dominate and be the one. To prove everyone who ever doubted him that they're fucking wrong. The thing about that is proving someone that they're wrong about you does not make the world a better place. And these guys know that. Th that's not their job. They're not trying to make the world a better place. They're trying to dominate. Consistently, Michael Jordan created enemies out of people. Someone would talk to him in a slightly off way, you know, and the person was thinking, well, that was pretty inconsequential. I was just, you know, talking in passing. And Michael would take that and make them his enemy. And he would use that hatred. He would use that anxiety to fuel him to win. Do we tell people to motivate themselves with anxiety, with fear, with spite, and with hatred? No, we don't. We tell them to be the best versions of themselves. Lead by example. And if you try hard and you work really hard, you'll be a winner. What is that gene? What does that gene that Michael Jordan, Kobe, and this Grayson kid have? The selfishness of their lifestyle. The spite, the hatred, the anxiety, the fear that they display for everyone. Why aren't we talking about this when we talk about genetics? Of course, Michael Jordan is six foot six. Kobe Bryant is right around the same height. And I'm sure this Grayson kid is a pretty smart dude, and if he didn't work as hard as he did, he'd be pretty damn good at jazz drumming. But don't we think that there are people who are more, by the terms of the strength and fitness world, genetically gifted? People who could have had more type two muscle fibers, people who are taller, better shooters than Michael Jordan? Do we think those people don't exist? Or do they not have the gene of the toxic winner? This is something that Adam Shiner and myself want to explore with this movie, The Weight. The main character in this, Casey Murray, is someone who's expressing that feeling. Creating a narrative to motivate himself. It's a narrative that is not a hero's journey, a, a protagonist on his way to make everything right in the world. It is the anti-hero. It is the journey of a hyper winner, someone who won't just win at all costs, but will spend everything that they can to win and collapse the very fabric of who they are as a person in this world. And they'll do all of that just to win. I don't think we are talking about this trait enough. And I think that is incredibly interesting to me. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed that little video essay. Please click the link in the description and help us out in creating the first narrative feature about Olympic weightlifting. Thank you.